Chapter Sixteen of Tales of the Enchanted Islands of the Atlantic. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Lynn Thompson. Tales of the Enchanted Islands of the Atlantic by Thomas Hickinson. Chapter Sixteen. Harold the Viking. Eric the Red, the most famous of all Vikings, had three sons, and once when they were children, the king came to visit Eric, and passed through the playground where the boys were playing. Leif and Bjorn, the two eldest, were building little houses and barns, and were making believe that they were full of cattle and sheep, while Harold, who was only four years old, was sailing chips of wood in a pool. The king asked Harold what they were and he said ships of war king olaf laughed and said the time may come when you will command ships my little friend then he asked bjorn what he would like best to have cornland he said ten farms that would yield much corn the king replied then he asked leif the same question and he answered cows how many so many that when they went to the lake to be watered they would stand close round the edge so that not another could pass that would be a large housekeeping said the king and he asked the same question of harold what would you like best to have servants and followers said the child stoutly how many would you like enough said the child to eat up all the cows and crops of my brothers at a single meal then the king laughed and said to the mother of the children you are bringing up a king as the boys grew leif and harold were ever fond of roaming while bjorn wished to live on the farm at peace their sister freydis went with the older boys and urged them on she was not gentle and amiable but full of energy and courage she was also quarrelsome and vindictive people said of her that even if her brothers were all killed Yet the race of Eric the Red would not end while she lived, that she practised more of shooting and the handling of sword and shield than of sewing or embroidering, and that as she was able, she did evil oftener than good, and that when she was hindered, she ran into the woods and slew men to get their property. She was always urging her brothers to deeds of daring and adventure. One day they had been hawking, and when they let slip the falcons, Harold's falcon killed two blackcocks in one flight, and three in another. The dogs ran and brought the birds, and he said proudly to the others, It will be long before most of you have any such success. And they all agreed to this. He rode home in high spirits and showed his birds to his sister Freydis. Did any king, he asked, ever make so great a capture in so short a time? It is indeed, she said, a good morning's hunting to have got five black cocks, but it was still better when in one morning a king of Norway took five kings and subdued all their kingdoms. Then Harold went away very humble and besought his father to let him go and serve on the Varangian guard of King Otho at Constantinople, that he might learn to be a warrior. So Harold was brought from his Norwegian home by his father Eric the Red, in his galley called the sea serpent and sailed with him through the mediterranean sea and was at last made a member of the emperor otho's varangian guard at constantinople this guard will be well remembered by the readers of scott's novel count robert of paris and was maintained by successive emperors and drawn largely from the scandinavian races eric the red had no hesitation in leaving his son among them as the young man was stout and strong very self-willed and quite able to defend himself the father knew also that the varangian guard though hated by the people held to one another like a band of brothers and that one brought up among them would be sure of plenty of fighting and plenty of gold the two things most prized by early norsemen for ordinary life harold's chief duties would be to lounge about the palace keeping guard wearing helmet and buckler and bearskin with purple underclothes and golden clasped hose, and bearing as armour a mighty battle-axe and a small scimitar. Such was the life led by Harold, 
till one day he had a message from his father through a new recruit calling him home to join an expedition to the western seas i hear my son the message said that your good emperor whom may the gods preserve is sorely ill and may die any day when he is dead be prompt in getting your share of the plunder of the palace and come back to me the emperor died and the order was fulfilled it was the custom of the varangians to reward themselves in this way for their faithful services of protection and the result is that to this day greek and arabic gold crosses and chains are to be found in the houses of norwegian peasants and may be seen in the museums of christiana and copenhagen no one was esteemed the less for his love of spoil if he was only generous in giving the norsemen spoke contemptuously of gold as the serpent's bed and called a generous man a hater of the serpent's bed because such a man parts with gold as with a thing he hates when the youth came to his father he found eric the red directing the building of one of the great norse galleys nearly eighty feet long and seventeen wide and only six feet deep the boat had twenty ribs and the frame was fastened together by withes made of roots while the oaken planks were held by iron rivets the oars were twenty feet long and were put through oar holes and the rudder shaped like a large oar was not at the end but was attached to a projecting beam on the starboard originally steerboard side the ship was to be called a dragon and was to be painted so as to look like one having a gilded dragon's head at the bow and a gilded tail on the stern while the moving oars would look like legs and the row of red and white shields hung along the side of the boat would resemble the scales of a dragon and the great square sails red and blue would look like wings this was the vessel which young harold was to command he had already made trips in just such vessels with his father had learned to attack the enemy with arrow and spear also with stones thrown down from above and with grappling irons to clutch opposing boats he had learned to swim from early childhood even in the icy northern waters and he had been trained in swimming to hide his head beneath his floating shield so that it could not be seen he had learned also to carry tinder in a walnut shell enclosed in wax so that no matter how long he had been in the water he could strike a light on reaching shore he had also learned from his father acts of escape as well as attack thus he had once sailed on a return trip from denmark after plundering a town the ships had been lying at anchor all night in a fog and at sunlight in the morning lights seemed burning on the sea but to eric the red said it is a fleet of danish ships and the sun strikes on the gilded dragon crests furl the sail and take to the oars they rowed their best yet the danish ships were overtaking them when eric the red ordered his men to throw wood overboard and cover it with danish plunder this made some delay as the danes stopped to pick it up and in the same way eric the red dropped his provisions and finally his prisoners and in the delay thus caused he got away with his own men but now harold was not to go to denmark but to the new western world the wonder strands which leif had sought and had left without sufficient exploration first however he was to call at greenland which his father had first discovered it was the custom of the viking explorers when they reached a new country to throw overboard their sea posts or set stocker the curved part of their doorways and then to land where they floated ashore but eric the red had lent his to a friend and could not get them back so that he sailed in search of them and came to a new land which he called greenland because as he said people would be attracted thither if it had a good name then he established a colony there and then leif the lucky as he was called sailed still farther and came to the wonder strand or magic shores these he called Vinland or Wineland, and now a rich man named Karlsefni was to send a colony thither from Greenland, and the young Harold was to go with it and take command of it. Now, as Harold was to be presented to the rich Karlsefni, he thought he must be gorgeously arrayed, so he wore a helmet on his head, a red shield richly inlaid with gold and iron, and a sharp sword with an ivory handle wound with golden thread. 
He had also a short spear and wore over his coat a red silk short cloak on which was embroidered both before and behind a yellow lion We may well believe that the sixty men and five women who composed the expedition were ready to look on him with admiration Especially as one of the women was his own sister Freydis now left to his peculiar care since Eric the Red had died The sturdy old hero had died still a heathen and it was only just after his death that Christianity was introduced into Greenland and those numerous churches were built there whose ruins yet remain even in regions from which all population has gone So the party of colonists sailed for Vinland and Freydis with the four older women came in Harold's boat and Freydis took easily the lead among them for strength though not always it must be admitted for amiability the boats of the expedition having left Greenland soon after the year 1000 coasted the shore as far as they could rarely venturing into open sea at last amidst fog and chilly weather they made land at a point where river ran through a lake into the sea and they could not enter from the sea except at high tide it was once believed that this was Narragansett Bay in Rhode Island but this is no longer believed here they landed and called the place hope from the Icelandic word hopa meaning an inlet from the ocean Here they found grapevines growing and fields of wild wheat There were fish in the lake and wild animals in the wood Here they landed the cattle and the provisions which they had brought with them and here they built their huts They went in the spring and during that summer the natives came in boats of skin to trade with them men described as black and ill-favored with large eyes and broad cheeks and with coarse hair on their heads these it is thought may have been the Eskimos The first time they came these visitors held up a white shield as a sign of peace and were so frightened by the bellowing of the bull that they ran away Then returning they brought furs to sell and wished to buy weapons But Harold tried another plan he bade the women bring out milk butter and cheese from their dairies and when the Skraelings saw that they wished for nothing else and the legend says the Skraelings carried away their wares in their stomachs But the Norsemen had the skins they had purchased This happened yet again, but at the second visit one of the Skraelings was accidentally killed or injured The next time the Skraelings came they were armed with slings and raised upon a pole a great blue ball and attacked the Norsemen so furiously that they were running away when Eric's sister Freydis came out before them with bare arms and took up a sword saying Why do you run strong men as you are from these miserable dwarfs whom I thought you would knock down like cattle? Give me weapons and I will fight better than any of you Then the rest took courage and began to fight and the Skraelings were driven back Once more the strangers came and one of them took up an axe a thing which he had not before seen and struck at one of his companions killing him Then the leader took the axe and threw it into the water after which the Skraelings retreated and were not seen again The winter was a mild one and while it lasted the Norsemen worked busily at felling wood and house building They had also many amusements in most of which Harold excelled They used to swim in all weathers one of their feats was to catch seals and sit on them while swimming Another was to pull one another down and remain as long as possible under water Harold could swim for a mile or more with his armor on or with a companion on his shoulder Indoors they used to play the tug of war dragging each other by a walrus hide across the fire Harold was good at this and was also the best archer sometimes aiming at something placed on a boy's head the boy having a cloth tied about his head and held by two men that he might not move at all on hearing the whistling of the arrow in This way Harold could even shoot an arrow under a nut placed on the head so that the nut would roll down and the head not be hurt He could plant a spear in the ground and then shoot an arrow upward so skillfully That it would turn in the air and fall with the point in the end of the spear shaft He could also shoot a blunt arrow through the thickest ox hide from a crossbow he could change weapons from one hand to the other during a fencing match or fence with either hand or throw two spears at the same time or catch a spear in motion 
He could run so fast that no horse could overtake him and play the rough games with bat and ball Using a ball of the hardest wood He could race on snowshoes or wrestle when bound by a belt to his antagonist and when he and his companions wished a rest they amused themselves with harp playing or riddles or chess the Norsemen even played chess on board their vessels and there are still to be seen on some of these the little holes that were formerly used for the sharp ends of the chessmen so that they should not be displaced they could not find that any european had ever visited this place but some of the skraelings told them of a place farther south which they called the land of the white man or great ireland they said that in that place there were white men who clothed themselves in long white garments carried before them poles to which white cloths were hung and called with a loud voice these it was thought by the norsemen must be christian processions in which banners were borne and hymns were chanted it has been thought from this that some expedition from ireland that of st brendan for instance may have left a settlement there long before but this has never been confirmed the skraelings and the norsemen were good friends for a time until at last one of eric's own warriors killed a skraeling by accident and then all harmony was at an end they saw no hope of making a lasting settlement there and moreover freydis who was very grasping tried to deceive the other settlers and get more than her share of everything so that harold himself lost patience with her and threatened her it happened that one of the men of the party olaf was harold's foster brother they had once had a fight and after the battle had agreed that they would be friends for life and always share the same danger for this vow they were to walk under the turf that is a strip of turf was cut and held above their heads and they stood beneath and let their blood flow upon the ground whence the turf had been cut after this they were to own everything by halves and either must avenge the other's death this was their brotherhood but freydis did not like it so she threatened olaf and tried to induce men to kill him for she did not wish to bring upon herself the revenge that must come if she slew him this was the reason why the whole enterprise failed and why olaf persuaded harold for the sake of peace to return to greenland in the spring and take a load of variable timber to sell there including one stick of what was called masso wood which was as valuable as mahogany and may have been at some time borne by ocean currents to the beach it is hardly possible that as some have thought the colonists established a regular trade in this wood for no such wood grows on the northern atlantic shores however this may be the party soon returned after one winter in vinland the good and on the way back harold did one thing which made him especially dear to his men a favorite feat of the norsemen was to toss three swords in the air and catch each by the handle as it came down this was called the hand sacks game the young men used to also try the feat of running along the oar blades of the rowers as they were in motion passing around the bow of the vessel with a spring and coming round to the stern over the oars on the other side few could accomplish this but no one but harold could do it and play the hand sacks game as he ran and when he did it they all said that he was the most skilful man at idrotti ever seen that was their word for an athletic feat but presently came a time when not only his courage but his fairness and justice were to be tried it happened this way there was nothing of which the norsemen were more afraid than of the teredo or shipworm which gnaws the wood of ships it was observed in greenland and iceland that pieces of wood often floated on shore which were filled with holes made by this animal and they thought that in certain places the sea were full of this worm so that a ship would be bored and sunk in a little while it is said that on this return voyage harold's vessel entered a worm sea and presently began to sink they had however provided a smaller boat smeared with sea oil which the worms would not attack they went into the boat and found that it would not hold more than half of them then harold said we will divide by lots without regard to the rank each taking his chance with the rest this they thought the norse legend says a high-minded offer 
They drew lots, and Harold was among those assigned to the safer boat. He stepped in, and when he was there, a man called from the other boat and said, Dost thou intend, Harold, to separate from me here? Harold answered, So it turns out. And the man said, very different was thy promise to my father when we came from Greenland, for the promise was that we should share the same fate. Then Harold said, It shall not be thus. Go into the boat, and I will go back to the ship, since thou art so anxious to live. Then Harold went back to the ship, while the man took his place in the boat, and after that Harold was never heard of more. End of chapter 16